My love says she would marry only me, and Jove himself could not make her care. For what women say to lovers, you'll agree, one writes on running water or on air. My God, that's good. Let's write her that. Nah. Poetry don't work on whores. Welcome to the Dreams of Consciousness podcast. If you'd be so kind, would you mind introducing yourself? Hello, I'm, my name is Maciek and I play guitar in Dormitorio. And how would you describe the music of Dormitorio? 
Would you say that Dormant Ordeal fits pretty well in death metal and black metal, and maybe with a few more discordant cool. elements in it? Okay, okay, okay. That would be that would be fine. And do you draw a lot of influences from music outside of metal? Uh, from outside metal? Hmm. I think that I listen to a lot of classical music. I, I'm not saying that our music is, is connected to, to classical music and in any way. We're not, we're not mixing it like, for example, Flesh God Apocalypse. But I like to think that my arrangements might be similar to, to those well-known tracks of great composers. <laughs> I, I'm, now I, I hear it's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't sound well, but it's this something's in here, you know? And so Dorman Ordeal is based in Poland. Yep. I listen to a lot of metal bands from Poland and a few of them have been on this podcast. To me, there's a there's a sound that I personally associate with Polish metal and Polish death metal. Do you feel that there's elements of that sound to your music, to Dorman Ordeal? Elements of Polish death metal. Mm. My main influences are from from the US actually. I grew up listening to bands like this was the 90s, so kind of a chord from Morbid Angel, Deicide. And maybe what what you hear in our music, this 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 Polish kind of death metal, maybe those musicians were also, you know, they were also listening to those these bands and we have this common ground in here. Maybe it's something like that. I don't I don't really listen to a lot of Polish death metal, black metal. I I, I usually I listen to those classic albums of from, from the US. Now, Morbid Angel seems to be a really big influence on a lot of Polish bands. Mm -hmm. Morbid Angel is an influence for basically every death metal band. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true too. But mm -hmm. I, I mean, when I think of a lot of bands that came from Poland, Vader, Azeroth, Behemoth, you know, there's a very strong mm -hmm. Morbid Angel influence on on these bands. Uh, do you know why? Maybe at some point we all listen to Morbid Angel <laughs> because it's probably the the them and Cannibal Corps. I think they are, these are two biggest bands in in the genre. Okay, fair enough. Can you tell me a little bit about how the band was formed and how you and the other mm -hmm. two members met and decided to make music together? Mm -hmm. The beginning around around two thousand and five, I think. There was only Radek, our drummer. This uh, Dormant Ordeal was his bedroom project, and he recorded two demos. He played guitar, bass, did the vocals, and he programmed all the drums. But at some point, he decided that he, he wanted to have a real band. So I think it was an ad, on, online online ad. I read and I, I got in touch with him, and I joined in 2008. 2008 few months later, we found our vocalist, Maciek. And next year, we were joined by Kasper, our bass player, who's he's not in the band anymore for like six months, but he was a huge part of it for the last 12 years. And you guys recorded your first EP yes. soon after meeting, mm -hmm. right? Now, we recorded the first EP in 2009, I think. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the music on that first EP, was that mostly songs that Radek had written? No, these are mainly my songs. I, I remember I wrote the first, uh, it was Your Mother's Slave, and this was like, I joined, and then a week later I, I already had these songs written, this song written, and I I showed it to, to the guy, to Radek, and some, some people that were at this point in the band, but... This was, you know, that was brief. And uh, more to come, it's probably four, first four tracks are mine, and then the last one is from some previous demo of Radek. Are you writing most of the songs for Dormant Ordeal? I'm writing actually 
all the songs because I'm the only guitar player in the band. <laughs> hmm? Now I'm also a bass player, so <laughs> there we go. And how does that usually work? Do you demo everything mm -hmm. and come up with temp drums and then send it to the other members? No, no. I actually write everything uh, at home. Every uh, I write all the riffs and about 80% of structure for the song. Then I uh, meet with Radek in our practice room. I, I show him, I play him this, this new song. He, we talk about, about some directions, but it's, it's basically his, his decision what drums he wants to play on it. We jam together and the, the first layer is, is, uh, is made that way. This first layer, I mean the, the guitar and drums. So you're doing all the arranging as well as writing the riffs? Most of the arrangements. Sometimes we change something on, on, on the spot when we, when we jam, when we, when, we, when we play around those, those riffs. But uh, it's, as I said, it's about 80% 80, 80 there when I finish the song at home. So you mentioned classical influences on maybe some of your arranging. Mm -hmm. How would you say that differs from, let's say, a standard metal or rock format, which tends mm -hmm. to be like verse, chorus, verse? You know, we also have this, this uh, we also follow those patterns, mm, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, etc. But I try to mix these things. Mm, one song is, as we said, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Other song is like verse, something, verse, uh, chorus. And, you know, it, it might seem, when you listen to it, it might seem like it's maybe chaotic, but it's very well thought from, from, my, from my side. And how, how does classical influences? Hmm. I, I, like, I like this this white, white sound, you know, this, when I, when I pick uh, the strings, I usually pick through all the strings, six strings at, at the time. Those, I play those chords, those big chords. I like to layer guitars to try to, to achieve this, this maybe not orchestral sound, sound, but you know, some kind of um, orchestral sound. So that first EP huh? was the one that I wasn't able to find. Uh, how would you describe that, that EP in comparison to your later work? How would you compare the way that the band has changed since then? It was, huh, it was maybe quite... It wasn't what we are today, that's for sure. Hmm. As I said, uh, there are, there were these songs like uh, "Your Mother's Slave." It, this song is uh, also on our debut album. It rains, it pours. Also, the sinless is there, and this that didn't make it is there. So it's this kind of music. This we we were just starting. So what can I say about those songs? They were quite restrained, maybe in comparison to the songs we are doing right now. Something like that. You mentioned that this band started as a, a bedroom project from your drummer, Radic. Mm -hmm. Did you guys already have a good sense of what kind of music you wanted to make? Uh, when, when I joined, right? This, that's what you're asking? Ah, yes, exactly. This project that Radek has was more grindcore than... It was death metal mixed with grindcore, and when I joined, I took all the uh, um, songwriting duties. So I let's say I exchanged those grindcore influences to black metal influences. So that's that. That was the moment it it, it changed the most, and then I I tried to expand our sound our sound from that point.
let's talk about this latest album. It's your third album, mm -hmm. and it's called The Grand Scheme of Things. Can you tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about your writing process for this specific album? It's basically the same process as every uh, every hour album from from the past. I, as I said, I write. I'm the only guitar player in the band, so every song starts with my riffs and those arrangements. Uh, I show songs to Radek, and he starts writing drums, part, drum parts around it. We we shifted some parts here and there, and. Uh, in the meantime, one of us, one of us wrote the lyrics. I, it is usually me that uh, I'm arranging uh, lyrics to fit the song. Uh, every now and then, we recorded those songs on our practice room uh, to hear to see if they're a good listen, if anything needs to be changed, tweaked. And once all songs were ready, we made a proper pre-production session, and we were ready to go. When did you start working on the album? Oh, probably around 2017. It was a long process. <laughs> can you explain why? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can, but let me just think for a second. You know, this band is, is, is not a career, right? It's, it's something that we, we like to do. For fun, we like to do when the time's right. So first, we need to secure everything else, like our jobs, our relationships, etc. Before we even think to, we, we even start to think about rehearsals, writing new songs. So it might seem that we spent those five years uh, writing the album, but actually there were whole weeks when I didn't even touch the guitar during that time. I mean, we we are much older than we, we we started, so our priorities had to change a bit. We could have finished it earlier, but we I think we just took our time and didn't rush it. Didn't want to rush it. As far as writing the riffs and arranging, do you have a specific process? Like, do you do you write in a flow state? Do you write one song at a time, or? Do you create in bursts and then try to arrange things the way you feel different pieces of music and different riffs fit together? I usually write one song at a time. Sometimes when I'm struggling with some with, some, with a song, I I may write another one in, in the meantime. It all starts with a riff that, that will be this the, the, the core of the song. At least I, I think. That's when I when I hear this riff, and I'm playing it, playing around it, try uh, uh, different variations, different timings. I I like to compose my songs, our songs. Maybe maybe I do it a little differently. Sometimes uh, I hear that other musicians, when they write the songs, they are just recording those riffs they they can say that they have like two 200 riffs for the new album but no songs yet this is this is weird to me i like when one riff emerges from another riff emerges from the previous riff if you know what i mean i like this flow i like when there are they are some in, intertwined maybe hmm yeah, I understand. Okay. I just I just like to write one song at a time and I I I like to feel the flow when I do it. So you mentioned the lyrics. Dormitory Deal has some very enigmatic song titles. Can you tell me a little bit about what what inspires you as far as lyrics go? Well, <sighs> Everything inspires us. It might be a, a book or a movie or a news from uh, from the TV. Maybe some uh, a catchphrase, a sentence you hear somewhere. That's sometimes I, I watch a movie and there's this line. Maybe someone said something, and this this uh, this light bulb <laughs> in, in my head just says, "Write this down. It might be something." So for a song like 
the borders of our language are not the borders of our world. Mm -hmm. Where specifically did that come from? Oh, years ago, uh, there was this, this thinker called Wittgenstein, and he said that the borders of my language are the borders of my world. And as far as I know, he meant that you can only explain things to another person if this person understands your language. I thought it's a nice catchphrase, and I might, might try, at least try to write something around it. Basically, this, this, this song is about uh, three people, the woman in distress, man who hears her cries, and some third person. The woman doesn't understand why she has to suffer because of someone else's decisions. Man she speaks to uh, doesn't care much about what will happen to her. He, he just knows he, that he won't let her blame, for, blame him for the actions of others. And the third person hears their statements and decides not to have an opinion at all. Hence the line, when the stance on one's right don't reflect each other, I can see it. So in this broader picture, I think that probably each of them, each one of them is right. I, I have no idea what they're going through. I'm in no position to judge them. So I think it's not our language that limits us. It's our convictions, beliefs, our upbringing, our will. In short, that's what this song is, is about. And you mentioned that sometimes movies uh, can can be the spark mm -hmm. that leads to a song. The line, poetry doesn't work on horrors, I believe, came from the movie The Assassination of Jesse yeah. James. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me yes. what about that movie you liked or what about that line you liked? Oh, I liked that line because it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it, was, it was poetic and harsh at the same time. And I liked that. This song is, is not inspired by the, the, the plot of this movie in, that's, in any way. It's, it's also neither about poetry nor about horse, <laughs> literal. But uh, I, I really wouldn't like to explain this one, if you, if you agree. Absolutely, yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I said I, I wouldn't like to. Oh, you don't <laughs> want to? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. It's, it's quite complicated, this, this one. So I'm, I might just lose in, get lost in my words. Okay, no problem. But just from the, the explanation of your, your last, The Borders of Our Language, it seems mm -hmm. that there are, are narrative and storytelling elements to your songs. This one, for sure. I, I, I noticed that I, I'm shifting toward those lyrics turned stories, maybe. So I wrote three lyrics for this album. It was Borders, uh, Poetry, and I also wrote the lyrics to Bright Constellations. And it's also some kind of a story, you know? I like to reveal the, the, the plot as the song progresses. Now, outside of Dorman Ordeal, do you also write stories? Mm -hmm. Or are you... No, no, not at all. It's, 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 mm, Dorman Ordeal is my only creative outlet right now. Is, is that something mm -hmm. you're interested in doing? Like maybe writing scripts or directing movies? I have some ideas, but I'm, I'm probably not that skilled to follow and write a proper story. So not really, not really.
Let's talk about the recording of the album. The album was recorded, mixed, and mastered by Pavel Grabowski at a studio, Janus Studio. I believe he's also worked with Anti Gamma and Lost Soul, uh, other prominent bands in the the Polish scene. And you've you've worked with Pavel before. He he's mixed and mastered previous albums, and I believe he recorded your last album. Yes. Can you tell me about working with Pavel? and why you guys have worked with him uh, consistently throughout your career? We actually recorded our first album, The Transit Tours, in our rehearsal, rehearsal room, our practice room here in Krakow. And it was recorded by our fl- friend. But we decided that we wanted it mixed, properly mixed and mastered by some studio guy. And actually, Radek found uh, Janos Pavel. He found him somewhere, probably through the. I don't know if you know this band, Masakist. Oh uh, yeah, I believe but, they're. Isn't their their vocalist now in Azeroth? Hmm, maybe not. In Azeroth is the guy from Embryonal, I think. Oh, Embryonal. That's right. You're right. Sorry. In Masakis, there was this uh, Sauron, the first vocalist of the Capitol. Ah, okay, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. It's uh, it's uh, it's I don't know if, if if they are still active, but there was something in their in their debut album uh, that caught uh, Radek's attention. So he he told us about Janos. We reached out to him. He agreed to mix the album. We were. Oh, we were very pleased with the results, so we knew that if we ever do the second one, we will for sure go to his studio to 
to record it properly, and we did. So for the third time was no brainer. We already knew what to expect. It was really smooth, smooth process. We, we kind of know what to expect from Janos. I think that maybe he knows what to expect from us. It's like when he when he sent us the first mixes. It was okay. It, it, it's okay, but we need to talk about it. So we write write down our our notes. We send it to him, and he's like one day and it's everything is there everything what we want is there he he just gets us so it's a it's a it's a good thing to work with and what would you say he brings to your sound he knows how to you know our music is is intense right a lot is going on there are those layers of guitars on top of each other and he knows exactly how to locate them maybe in the mix so it's uh, it's well heard and it's not deciding it's not muddy it's 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 uh, it's, it's clear and uh, while intense it's also a good lesson maybe <laughs> you know what i mean now is clarity an important issue for your music for me yes uh, probably for other guys too because what is the point of playing all those notes when you can hear them? Right. I really like good production. I like production like um, Hate Eternal, Cannibal Corpse, those, these kind of bands, not this, not those tapes, uh, CDs when you can barely hear what's going on. That's a, a controversial opinion on this, on this podcast. Well, <laughs> that's my opinion. <laughs> Now, I, I speak to a lot of, not necessarily musicians, but people who like that, you know, that kind of portal buried sound. Do you know what I'm talking about? It, it has its... Mm, I, I know that there are, there are, uh, there is music, there are albums that may gain something from this, from this sound, but overall, uh, I prefer the clearer ones. Yes, but I understand what you're talking about, yes. No, I agree. I, I grew up listening to Immolation Records where I could barely hear the guitars, and once the, once the production improved, my, my enjoyment of the music improved as well. Yes, exactly. That's, what they, that's why they, they do it, right? They played all those uh, twisted riffs for you to, to hear them, not to, not to you know, wander what the hell is going on <laughs> so the grand scheme of things is out now Masiec? yes how can people order the album what's the best way to get it oh uh, there are actually two ways to order an album order order this album we have a, a bandcamp page uh, so anyone can visit our bandcamp page and uh, purchase a cd from there the Gipak cd signed by us we, we we sign all the cds uh, we offer we selling there and also our label self-made god records has this self-made god store and in the the album is also available there uh, and uh, some some t-shirts are available there so if someone is interested uh, they might get a bundle or or you know mm-hmm. And you guys are selling posters as well, right? Not exactly posters. We are we are selling those PDF files. Uh, it's like do it yourself, print it yourself. <laughs> it's a symbolic symbolic price. We we thought that we have this nice artwork that might look look good on the wall in A3 format. So we decided why not. Why not sell it if anybody wants to to get it, do it, print it, and enjoy it. So you you mentioned the the DIY print. I, I remember going to shows where sometimes bands would have silk screens in the back of their van, and so if people wanted a shirt, they could just like you said, pay a pay a token price and 
and bring a shirt along and the band would silk screen the design onto onto your shirt mm -hmm. do you guys come from that that kind of diy culture not really not not this band we had we had some no 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 all our t-shirts were were printed by some companies so uh, no not really <laughs> But separate from the t-shirts, the like this kind of DIY mentality, is that important to you guys? Uh, what exactly do you mean by uh, Well, you know, DIY? as opposed to printing up posters and shipping them out, giving people the opportunity to, to download the posters and print them themselves. Hmm. That's probably the only DIY thing <laughs> we've ever done. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do notice that all your albums are available as Name Your Price downloads. Mm -hmm. Right. How do you feel about the Name Your Price system? It's it really pays off for us. <laughs> it's a great way. Oh, really? To yes, because let's let's be honest. This album is already on at least five websites with torrents and uh, rare rares. So it's uh, either way, it's going to end up on you know to to be available for free. So why not do our our fans something for free anyway? If they want, they might pay anything they like. If they don't want to pay, it's okay. It's up to them. This, these days, you know, we have we have YouTube. YouTube is free. We have Spotify, all those all those quote unquote Russian servers where you can get every every album. Why force people to to pay something something more than you know neighbor price? And if people want to follow Dormant Ordeal online and keep up to date with what you guys are doing, what's the best way to do that? The best way is to follow us on Facebook. I think it's the most updated space. We also have an Instagram Instagram profile that's fairly new, but we we're gaining followers there too. That would be it, I think. Those those two, mainly Facebook, is is the is the is the right place to to get information about the band. So I'm not sure what the situation is in Poland right now. I know around the world things were opening up before the Omicron variant. Mm -hmm. Will you guys get a chance to play shows or do tours or anything like that? Um, we haven't played a show since 2015, actually. We haven't even played one show to promote the release of our second album. So this pandemic doesn't really change much for us, <laughs> especially now when we don't have a bass player. We're not that active, you know, we're not that active when it comes to playing live. Our, our private lives like to, to get in the way. So we have our obligations, daily jobs. That's how it goes. Do you see, do you see a possibility of you guys playing live or playing a festival or anything like that? Well, we'll see. We're not saying no. We, we will see how it goes this time. Maybe we will play something when next year, maybe spring or summer. I'm not sure I don't have any dates, but there are some, I can even say talks, but no, let's say there are some talks about it. Is hmm? there anything else you want to say? Oh, thank you for having me here. I, I've been following your, your podcast actually for some time, and it's a, it's a pleasant surprise to be invited. Well, the album's really good, and I like your music. Great. And I love <laughs> Polish bands. I wish I could have more Polish death metal bands on the podcast. There's this band, uh, Redemptor. These are our friends. We actually released the albums the same day, December 3rd, on the same label. Maybe you should uh, you should check it out. It's called uh, the album is called Agonia. I think you like it. Very cool. I'll check it out. Thank you so much, message. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much.